Welcome. So, um, the big bummer of the Christmas Eve service is that our live streaming audio was not recorded. So, um, Jordan and I are going to rewatch the Christmas Eve five o'clock family service and kind of give a, a, an audio rundown for you of what you would have heard had the audio been working. So, um, this is our attempt at voicing over our own voices and uh, to give you a, an idea of, of what that service would have looked like. So as we start watching tonight, um, you'll see that there are big green uh, thunder sticks and those were giveaways that we gave to all the kids. Um, there was a lot of people that were nervous about those <laughs> because they did make a lot of noise. Um, but uh, the kids did a good job of tracking with the service. We used them a few times in the service and uh, uh, but it was super massive chaos as people were coming in to the worship space. Um, and so you can see them kind of being moved around and, uh, and being used. So Jordan, you're sitting up front there and yep, uh, looks like right our first video there. is about to roll. So yep. we'll, we'll let that play. Welcome to Christmas Game Day 2019. I'm Bobby De Pasquale. Tonight's lineup is sure to deliver an evening full of spectacular plays. I mean, hymns and readings. We are excited to be coming to you this year live from St. Paul Lutheran Church in Weston, Florida. Thanks for joining us. Throughout our contest mm, service tonight, we are pleased to inform you that Jordan Carter will be providing commentary and an in-depth reporting as well as statistical analysis. Thanks, Bobby. In just a few moments, we will be going through our starting lineup. But before we get to that, it looks like people are already starting to file into the sanctuary at St. Paul, eagerly selecting their seats for Christmas game day 2019. Let's learn more about these St. Paul worshipers. We're here to find some of the first worshipers on the scene for the Christmas service. Hello, sir. How long have you been here today? Oh, hi. I've been here since, well, we've been here since um, noon. Noon, right? Yeah, noon. So it's been like more than five hours? Well, yeah. We've just, we've just had a whole great time here together. What have you guys been doing to pass the time? Well, we had our tailgate. Um, we played some checkers, ate some free food. Um, oh, we even had time to set up our fantasy pastor league. And we're just really excited to be here. Yeah! <laughs> Well, as you can see, the excitement for Christmas game day is already building here at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Weston. Back to you, Bobby. Thanks, Jordan. Glad to see the excitement is already in the building. With the celebration happening only once a year, it's no wonder people have been waiting so long. We will be back with you shortly to continue our pregame uh, service coverage from St. Paul and Weston. All right, so after uh, that introduction video happened, um, we had a, a song that was sung by uh, Kelsey Templin and Carla accompanied her. And so that's, that's the song that happened in between that first video and our next video. Jordan, you want to sing a rendition of? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll make you do that. Uh, <laughs> um, go into the, uh, after the song, they go into the uh, introducing the players video, which will begin. All right, let's watch it. We hope that you've been enjoying the pregame show, uh, sorry, the, the pre-service music tonight, but now we send you back to Jordan and the starting lineup. Thanks, Bobby. It looks like we have our regular starters lined up for tonight's service. On the keys tonight, we have St. Paul's longtime organist, Carla Kalinske. Winner of the Beethoven Trophy, she has displayed her skills at St. Paul for many Christmas Eve services. There isn't a Christmas hymn that she can't play. Our next starter tonight is DCE Jeremy Becker. Jeremy has been a part of St. Paul Christmas Eve services since 2012, and he has won the Olaf Trophy in 2015 for best use of a snowman and snow machine in a Christmas Eve service. It's always a guess what kind of trick plays his special teams might pull off tonight. The St. Paul team is excited that Pastor Scott, the newcomer to the team, will be the starting pastor tonight. While Pastor Scott may be new to St. Paul, 
Scouts are hopeful for the future, and the front office is planning for him to have a long career in South Florida. Along with these three, there will be others on the team that will contribute to the success of the evening, including a crucifer, readers, ushers, and other musicians and singers, including the kids' choir under the direction of Irene Villanueva. Back to you, Bobby. Thanks, Jordan. It appears that the St. Paul team is stacked and ready to go. Stay tuned, folks, because the kickoff, uh, the opening welcome, is just moments away. All right, and then after the um, introduction of the starting lineup video, Michaela Becker sang a song, and uh, neither of us are going to try and recreate that for you either. Uh, and then Jordan has his introduction of me coming up to do this. So why don't you read your part there? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it seems like we are about ready to begin Christmas Game Day 2019. The words of welcome are a critical moment as it really sets the stage for how the rest of the service will play out. It seems that Jeremy is taking his position now to deliver the words of welcome. The attention of, of a worship participant can be won or lost in this moment. Let's see how Jeremy delivers tonight. Awesome. So then as Jordan was reading that, I walked forward um, and uh, you'll see me giving the opening welcome for, for the service. And so it, uh, it went something like this. And uh, obviously I went off script a little bit because I was talking live, but uh, um, I said, the Lord be with you. Merry Christmas. Welcome to the family Christmas Eve worship. We're glad that you can be a part of this amazing celebration as we welcome the Christ child born in Bethlehem. As you can see, the networks have taken over and so we're celebrating Christmas game day 2019. And when this happened, uh, the, uh, the game day logo and video rolled. And then a special welcome to guests and visitors. Please sign in the attendance book. And I talked about how the attendance book worked. I also shared with people where the bathrooms are. Sometimes when you have visitors, they just don't know where the bathrooms are and it's not always easy to find them here. So I shared that. And then I, I said, you'll also notice that it was the uh, giveaway night here at the ballpark. I mean, here at St. Paul, you should have picked up a candle, either an electronic or a wax candle. And we'll use those towards the end of our worship tonight. Kids were also given green blow-up thingies, um, and what are those called? Oh yeah, thunder sticks. Uh, believe it or not, we're going to be using them right away in the service. So if you haven't blown them up yet, you can do so now. And then I gave them time to blow them up. Uh, some of them were banging them around a little bit. It was a little awkward. Um, and, uh, and then we'll hear this video that played from Bobby analyzing my introduction welcome. Well, it seems that Jeremy got things off to a fairly solid start. The congregation responded well with the Christmas greeting, and they really were paying attention to what he had to say. I'm not sure he landed the dismount so well. Right there towards the end, he stumbled a little bit on coming up with thundersticks, and then completely lost everyone when he had them inflate the thundersticks. Let's see if he can regain this moment and get the handoff to Pastor Scott. And after that video, I said, uh, let's begin worship. If you would please stand and turn and face the processional cross. And then at this point, Pastor Scott took over. And, uh, and so he does the invocation, which is in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And uh, when he did that, Carla starts playing the first hymn. And then Pastor Scott interrupted her and said, um, the opening hymn is going to be, O Come All Ye Faithful. So Carla stopped playing. And then Jordan breaks in with this. I didn't see that coming. Was that a miscommunication between pastor and the organist? Or could it have been a blatant interruption of the opening hymn? It seems a bit early in the, work, in the worship service to pull this, but it almost seems like they're try, they just tried to ice the organist. Let's see how well she'll recover from this. Awesome. Cool. So then after Jordan read that, uh, we moved right into the opening hymn, which is, O Come All Ye Faithful. And uh, again, Jordan and I would love to sing this for you, but it's really not necessary. Unless you want to. No. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> All right. Unless you have auto-tune on this thing. Auto-tune would be great. All right, then Pastor Scott greeted everybody after O Come All You Faithful. He said, may the light and peace of Christ be with you all. And everybody said, and also with you. And this is where Jordan, you pulled an audible, you, you yeah. called a timeout. Yep, but I came out in front of everyone. I just said, all right, everyone, we are clear for a TV timeout. All right, and uh, I said, I'm not sure we need a TV timeout. Well, it's part of the contract with the live and stream networks. We have to provide a certain amount of our airtime to our sponsors. 
Yeah, but I feel like we're just getting started. Sorry, Jeremy, but we gotta pay the bills. And we'll be back right after this from a word from our sponsors. And then we ran these commercials. Something's happening. Something extraordinary. Something exciting. Something authentic and true. A new streaming service has joined the ranks of Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, and the many other services jostling for control of your TV. St. Paul Plus. St. Paul Plus will include original programming exclusive to St. Paul and all the activities happening at St. Paul. Now you too can catch all the details of the staff putting together the bulletins for worship and answering the phones throughout the day. On each Wednesday, a new installment of the confirmation classes will drop, and on Saturdays, you can even tune in as the sanctuary pews get set and last-minute worship prep happens. Now, you might not be able to see Baby Yoda or watch favorite cartoons from the vault, but you will be able to watch holiday bulletin prep teams at work and listen to all your favorite St. Paul musical groups practice. Don't miss out on your opportunity to catch all the action at St. Paul with St. Paul Plus. Do not drive or operate heavy machinery while using this product. A big thank you to our sponsors, and welcome back, everyone. Let's get you back into the worship action at St. Paul with our confession and forgiveness. Let's see how Pastor and Jeremy can bring it with the absolution this year. After the commercials ran, uh, I came back to kind of prepare everybody for the confession absolution, and we used the thunder sticks to do that. So here's what I said. As we prepare to confess our sins, to say we're sorry for all the things that we have messed up on or neglect to do, uh, let's use our thunder sticks. If I say something that makes God happy, I want you to bang your sticks together. If I say something that makes God sad, I want you to keep your sticks very quiet. So you can see, uh, here's what I said. I started with singing praises to God and they kept them, they were loud. Using God's name inappropriately, they were soft. Whining and complaining, eh, they're banging them again right there. Sharing the last cookie with a friend, they banged them again. Wait, wait, did you just did you oh, say no. whining, complaining? They were banged. <laughs> they didn't. Bang. I was watching. I was, I'm like, that's not what the show's to be doing, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> nope, they weren't supposed to be banging for whining and complaining. They must not have. I was watching them bang, but I can't hear the audio. So yeah, I, I went through a whole list of things: singing praises to God, uses God, using God's name inappropriately, whining and complaining, sharing the last cookie with a friend, making fun of someone else, leaving someone out of the game you're playing, obeying your mom and dad. Coming to worship with a joyful attitude, skipping church to sleep in, doing the job that no one else wants to do, telling a lie, praying for those who are in need, and telling others that Jesus loves them. I have to tell you, they did get them all right, even though I just did not. Um, and then afterwards, I said, all right, Pastor Scott, I think it's time for you to help us go through the confession and absolution. And so he did the responsive reading um, that, uh, that the congregation said with him. We're going to skip past all of that and uh, jump to... Um, the next part and so what happened next is the the kids choir came up to sing and so uh, you can see right now the Irene is getting them all in place they sang a lovely song from uh, the kids program that they had done the the Sunday prior to um, you can go back onto our, our YouTube channel and watch that whole thing so even though you can't hear them sing on this recording you can go back and watch them sing uh, their whole performance at the 830 or the 11 o'clock service from December earlier on in December so let's get past that. After the offering, um, then uh, we have a recap of those kids singing by Jordan Carter. Well, that was just beautiful. Obviously the hardworking kids choir under the direction of their coach, Irene Villanueva, really added to the message of this service. They're going to be really happy when they listen back on the replay from that performance. From the gathering of the offering and kids singing, we now move into the reading portion of our service. For a special service like this, it's always great to have kids help read the Bible. Let's listen as they read the story of that first Christmas. Kind of funny because they can't go back and listen how they sang because we didn't have the audio. But anyway, um, as we do that, we moved into the readings. And so uh, we have our narrators uh, read from Luke chapter 2. Following that, we sang Angels We Have Heard on High. And then we had another video that reviewed the singing of the congregation. Coming off of a great hymn like that, 
let's pause and take a moment to analyze the singing aspects of those in attendance at the Christmas Game Day 2019 service. The statistics show that 82% of adults were singing on that last hymn. That's higher than the 67% average singing in most services. 10% of those not singing were at least moving their lips to the words. It's uncertain if they don't feel like they can sing or if they just don't like to sing. It's also uncertain of why the other 8% were not singing at all. Our sources say that it was a mix of distractions, ranging from helping kids color to juggling the extra handouts and giveaways of tonight's services. Either way, the music team has to be happy with the results of the singing this evening. All right, after the review of the congregational singing, uh, we continued with our readings from Luke chapter 2, 8 through 14, and then we sang, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. And then, uh, what was we, next after that? Uh, we have a video reviewing the slide advancement of the AV crew. And they, they did a pretty good job, so we'll have to, have to watch that and uh, hear the review from Bobby, I think, did that one. Yeah, Bobby did that one. Another big factor in a service like tonight being successful is the rate and timing of the slide advancement from the audiovisual team. Advancing the slide too quickly and the end of a phrase could be lost. If a slide isn't advanced quickly enough, then the singers might miss the first syllables of the next line. Putting up the wrong slide or wrong order can just take a person out of the singing altogether. If we look at the advancement rate this evening, 75% of the slides have been advanced in the prime advancement window, while 18% have been a little after and 7% just before. Again, this is a win for the AV team on a night like tonight. Let's see how that continues to play out as we continue our readings and singing. Okay, so after that uh, video reviewing the, ed the slide advancement of the AV crew, we went into our final reading, which was Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, and then also 9 through 11. Uh, after we got through re reading that verse, then we went into our next hymn, which was the first Noel, first two verses. And then after we finished singing that song, uh, we, uh, we went into the uh, sermon portion of the service, and then I came in with a little uh with a little something to say about the substitution call because we had jeremy substitute in instead of pastor scott and i said wait folks what's this it looks like the worship planning team is pulling the starting pastor and putting in the dce for the message tonight this substitution wasn't on my notes for tonight's service with a crowd like this it's a little surprising that they would bench pastor scott and put in the dce as a substitute but maybe pastors dealing with an injury we weren't aware of or maybe it's a trick play, but either way, let's listen in and see how the second stringer does. All right, so after that awesome welcome uh, for a sermon, then I, I delivered this message. Uh, kind of went like this, I'll read it, even though I probably changed a few things as it went along. Um, <clears throat> well, that's an introduction uh, that is, sh is sure to build up confidence. Um, grace, mercy, and Christmas peace be with you all from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen. Interestingly enough, I spent most of my sporting career as a substitute. In basketball or soccer or another, another team sport, the coach would usually start my teammates and would put me in when they needed a water break or a breather. Uh, after that, I, uh, I threw a flag and I blew my whistle as loud as I could and I uh, jumped in on a little message and I said, Jeremy, I have to throw a penalty for that comment. Uh, throw a flag? A flag is for a penalty. Did I do something wrong? Yes, you are clearly not telling the truth and are being self-deprecating, so I'm penalizing you. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a thing. There isn't a penalty flag that can be thrown for self-deprecation. Well, then I strongly object. Okay, very well. You can strongly object to the story I'm telling about myself, uh, but maybe let's not throw a penalty flag for that? You know, why don't you sit over here and I'll tell you the whole story and I think it will make more sense. Are you benching me too? Well, yes, in a sense, but that's part of the story. Um, in the end, we all sort of get benched, but I'm getting ahead of myself. And then uh, I had you sit down. I sat down, I threw my flag one last time. <laughs> you did, which was funny because that wasn't in the script. So it's always fun when, when things happen like off script. So then uh, uh, I go back to the, the lectern and, and read from there and continue on with the message. So I said, I need some help from all of you with the thunder sticks. Um, every time I say the word substitute, I need you to bang your thunder sticks together three times. Can we practice? 
and they did it. And uh, yeah, they did a pretty good job. Okay, so every time I read the word substitute, they did this. And so I wanna tell you three stories of when a substitute was put into the game and helped bring victory to the team. In 2014, Germany's soccer team was trying to win the World Cup. With only two minutes of normal time left in the game, it was all tied up. Germany's coach decided to take out one of its greatest starters and put in a substitute. The coach put in Mario Gutza and told him to go and show the world that he was just as good as any other starter and even better than Messi. Is that how you pronounce it? Gutza? I, yeah, that's how I looked it up, but anyway. Mario was... Sounds, at, sounds pretty good. German names have like their emphasis on the end. So. True, there you go. So Mario went in as the substitute. And you know what? He helped Germany win the World Cup. He scored a goal sweeping past uh, the goalie Sergio Romero with time left on the clock to ensure that there was no penalty shot uh, shootout. In scoring, he became the first substitute to hit the winning goal in the World Cup final. Carson Wentz was a starting quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. This MVP candidate went down with an ACL injury to his knee and the coaches for the Eagles in the 14th week of the season had to, be, had to put in their backup quarterback. The substitute, and his name was Nick Foles. Nick Foles went on to deliver enough wins to get his team to the Super Bowl that year and they went on to play Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. That's when we got some serious boos. Well, Foles, the substitute, went 28 for 43 in the big game, threw three touchdowns and was the Super Bowl MVP. By pulling off the upset, Foles, the substitute, became just the 10th quarterback in NFL history to lead his team to a Super Bowl victory after starting the season as a backup. The last story I want to share with you is a little different. It's also about a substitute, but it isn't about a game. You see, God created the heavens and the earth and everything that is in it, including you and me. When he did that, he made everything perfectly, but we've messed it up because we sinned. God knew that he would have to put in a substitute to take our place, someone who could live perfectly and die and rise again to save us. That's why God sent his son Jesus to be born on this earth. He was born in Bethlehem on that first Christmas night, and that is why we celebrate his birthday each and every year. Jesus was born so he could be our substitute, so he could take our place and not just win a game, but win for us eternal life in heaven. Now that's an amazing gift to celebrate this and every Christmas. The greatest substitute, his name was Jesus and is Jesus, and we celebrate his victory for us tonight. Amen. Amen. May you always remember that Jesus came to take our place and win the victory over sin and death because he first loved us. He became our substitute. And then after that, we went into our uh, candle lighting ceremony and doing prayers after the sermon and everything. Uh, we, uh, Pastor Scott led, led a prayer and then we uh, sang the hymn Silent Night. And then uh, right before we dismissed anybody, we had our uh, final video. It's a wrap up video summarizing the, ser the uh, service all together. That plays here. Well, it seems that the clock is ticking and the final moments of the service are almost here. Jordan, can you run us through some of the highlights of tonight's contest or er, service? You bet. Thanks, Bobby. Well, as we look back, there were many things that really stood out from amazing songs about Jesus' birth in Bethlehem readings from God's word about what happened on that first Christmas, and a moving experience by candlelight. But the best part of Christmas Game Day 2019 is the reminder that Jesus came to earth to take our place, to be our substitute. That's great, Jordan. That's what I took away from tonight, too. God knew that he would have to send his only son, Jesus, to be born as one of us to take our place so that he could save us from our sin. As we conclude our broadcast tonight, please remember that any rebroadcast, retransmission, or account of this game, or service, without the express written consent of Major League Worship is prohibited. Thanks for tuning in and Merry Christmas. So after we came back from the wrap-up uh, video from Jordan and Bobby, um, Pastor Scott got up to do the benediction, but he also pulled an audible and uh, took a moment to thank everybody who helped with the service 
and, um, and, and be a part of everything, which is great. Um, and then he led us in the benediction. We sang joy to the world, and uh, we headed out. And he uh, shared the dismissal, go out into the world, let Jesus' light shine through you, go in peace, serve our newborn king, Jesus. And we all said thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. So Jordan, thanks for helping me recap today. Yep, um, it would have been nice if the re audio recorded, but this is a good second choice. Yep. When we've got this awesome commentary without it. So. <laughs> That's right. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.